The year's eighth most noteworthy story is one that started 29 years ago, likely to echo into next year and likely far beyond. For most of his tenure in the U.S. Senate, Jeff Bingaman was New Mexico's junior senator, but five terms in the Senate earned the man some serious seniority among Democrats. Just as Pete Domenici's departure shook the New Mexico political landscape, so too will the retirement of Jeff Bingaman. Laura Sanchez, the congressional delegation is about to be a whole lot less experienced regardless of who replaces him. So where do we go from here? Are we just going to be in for a little fallow period, not getting all the juicy federal money and all that kind of thing? Or is well, this a good thing in the long haul? Who knows? I mean, it's obvious that he, he had quite the reputation. He had amassed a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. um, he wielded tremendous power in terms of energy. He was a leader, um, mm -hmm. well-respected in the Senate. I, I think that's a huge loss for New Mexico. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of changing times. I think mm -hmm. we'll see... Um, other candidates, we already have seen other candidates. There's a, there, you know, there there's always seems to be this domino effect of people right. leaving their posts yeah. and running for the higher offices, sure. and in turn, other people jumping into those races. Um, so, so we're seeing that sort of domino effect, like we saw after Domenici left. And I think with that brings change, and uh, certainly, you know, you got to work your way back up the ladder. But mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, we see some new faces, and and it's it's changing faces you know, minorities, mm -hmm. women that are jumping in um, to races, and I think that's a, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think th in the long run it's a good Rob, thing. Rob, I was joking with our producer, Matt Grubbs, how we are suddenly like every other state. We don't have, we don't have the big seniority to just lay back on, and we have a, like, a lot of new blood. Mm -hmm. Is this a good thing? New energy? New it's ideas? It's a good new... thing for reporters like me, because we can talk <laughs> about the races that this is going to lead sure. to. Hector Balderas against Martin Heinrich on the Democratic side, which I think is a really intriguing race. Mm -hmm. And on the Republican side, Heather Wilson against Lieutenant Governor Governor John Sanchez and Greg Sowards, who's a businessman down in Las Cruces. And I, like I said, I think the Democratic race is really, really intriguing because you, know, you, you mentioned, Laura, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the subject of ethnicity. Mm. We haven't had a, a senator from the state of New Mexico who's Hispanic way back. We have to go back to, to, to Senator Montoya. Sure. And um, I think that that might play a factor in the uh, in the Balderas race against uh, against Martin Heinrich. Although right now, at this point, Heinrich's got a pretty big lead as far as money goes. Sure. Laura Pascas, um, you think, what Laura mentioned previously is interesting to me that if you think about what we had on the en Senate Energy Committee specifically, we were swapping our senators back and forth depending on who it was in the, in the White House with the majority, of, clearly the majority in the Senate. We were covered either way. It was a beautiful position. But for energy specifically, where does that leave us with the loss of Mr. Bingham in, in, that, in that committee and head of that? You know, that's re it's really interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, the oil and gas industries supported um, Senators Bingaman and Senator Domenici for a long time. So although Senator Bingaman has done some good things on renewable energy and alternative energy, um, and I'm sure that with the race opening up, that oil and gas money will continue to pour into the new candidates' coffers. But um, who knows, maybe some new energy and new blood will um, push, yeah. push on some of those issues a little bit more. Some of those issues are so specific to New Mexico. Mm -hmm. We had very good luck. You, you think about, like you're saying, oil and gas. I mean, anything that has to do with energy yeah. at all. We were really, really in good shape. It's true, and, and I think that um, as we look at the Senate races, it, I think it's worth noting how long Senator Domenici was in there, how long uh, Senator M Bingaman was in place, um, and the possibility that the person who wins this race could, this could be a lifetime career. And in some ways, that's what New Mexico wants, right? Because right. we want to climb to the top of that senior heap. We want to have uh, the power that we don't have in the House of Representatives, represented, you know, there in the Senate. And so, you know, as we make this decision, I have to believe that we're balancing things like how long do I think this person can stay in this job, and and what sort of representative are they? Do they understand the oil and gas industries and all of that kind mm -hmm. of thing? Yeah. Would you agree with that, Rob? That the next person that gets in, an incumbent yes. in that seat in this state, is in pretty good shape. Yeah, I know where you're going on that yeah. one. Yeah, and I I agree. I mean, just look at the contenders. I mean, Heinrich's a young man. If mm -hmm. he he gets in there, then he could very well be there for a long time. Balderas is mm -hmm. a young man. Heather Wilson's got lots and lots of years in sure. front of her. Uh, John. Sanchez. So the, all these people, I think, 
it, whoever gets this position has got an inside track to be there just as long as Senator Bingham was. Mm -hmm. Please. So one thing I do want to add, though, that in mm -hmm. terms of what Jeff Bingham represented and brought to the table, you know, he's from Silver City. He's mm -hmm. from the Silver City area. So he represented a lot of, knew very well that Southern District, and, uh, and that was his home base, was that Southern District. So, and the issues there, I, I think, you know, being also from that area, um, in Deming, it, I think there's a contrast there between the southern issues and the northern issues, and then also the urban areas of, mm -hmm. of sort of uh, Albuquerque, Santa Fe. And if you look at all the front runners, except for Greg, um, I'm going to Greg Sowards. Sowards. Uh, Sowards, Sowards, excuse me. Um, you know, all the rest of them have Albuquerque ties or northern New Mexico. Uh -huh. I mean, That's right. um, Hector Valdera's wagon mound originally, but also has strong a strong base in Albuquerque. And so mm -hmm. I, I wonder how much of that will influence um, how much attention they pay to the southern part of the state, where I think a lot of the federal issues come up in immigration, mm -hmm. but also in and gas. Mm -hmm. Interesting you mentioned the domino effect. Uh, it's probably reasonable to expect the last domino has not fallen from this Bingaman announcement. So we'll see what happens. It's been a rough year to wear a badge in Albuquerque. The city's top law enforcement suit, Darren White, resigned after escorting his wife away from an active crash investigation. And Albuquerque's top cop, Ray Schultz, is watching as a federal investigation begins to ask why his officers shot 20 people in 20 months. Sophie, um, APD's public image had a tough, tough, tough year. It seems like Ray Schultz wants to put something forward, all the recommendations mm -hmm. through that first report that came through. He's mm -hmm. implementing a lot of those. Forecasting on the 2012, what's your thought? I, th I think that it is possible that it is too late, too little too late for, mm -hmm. for uh, Chief Schultz, that this, that this may end up being, you know, his last round here at, at APD, and, and I, um, uh, it, there has been so much shakeup in the in the mm -hmm. cops, and there is so much mistrust amongst many people here in Albuquerque that I, I, it seems hard for to imagine that he can keep going much longer. He can't go. He can't go 60 days without the problem on his force. It seems at this point, and then you know, maybe those of us old enough that remember chiefs of police being fired, there's always these cascading events that happen yeah. just before the worst happens. So it's not just on him; it's on the entire force to save him, so to speak. I know. I. I, my father is a retired chief of police, ah. so um, I don't want to like you know say that law enforcement isn't a really difficult profession because I know firsthand that it is. Mm -hmm. But I feel like what's been happening in Albuquerque is distressing, and it's not just distressing for the families who have been their sons have been the victims of these crimes. But I feel like that sort of atmosphere in a police department in an entire community makes people fearful mm -hmm. of the police. It mm -hmm. makes people fearful to even say, yes, I believe that there should be an independent investigation, not an investigation that you know the city hired somebody to do it, but an independent right. outside investigation of what's happening. Yeah. How can the chief get in front of this situation, Rob? Well, I think probably the only way to, whenever you're in a situation like this, is to go out and do your job as best you, as you can and to be fair. And for the, uh, the cases that are in front of them that the APD is facing, to be honest with the people, mm -hmm. straightforward, and let the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think this is a necessarily a liberal or, or a conservative issue. I mean, it's, just, it's a civil rights issue, and civil rights affects everyone, mm -hmm. whether you're left or right. And I think it's important to try to get this right. What did you make, Rob, what did you make of the chief's position, uh, I'd say about a month, month and a half ago, that he's potentially thinking about literally a different cut of cop? Meaning, you know, we dropped the college requirement back sometime to, in our quest to get a thousand officers mm -hmm. on the street during Marty uh, right. Chavez and all that. In your sense, is that part of the problem that we've we've got something going on with? The, it might be. I mean, yeah. I'm certainly not an expert on this, but I will say this. I mean, it, and not just for Albuquerque or Santa Fe or even New Mexico or all, all across the country. I think it's something that I call the Andy Taylor Barney Fife effect. I think there's. The Andy Taylor from the Andy Griffin Show was a guy who used common sense. Yeah. And if, if he had to use a gun, he, he did. And then Barney Fife's on the opposite direction. We've got a, some, some police officers out there are too quick on the trigger. Some of the, and some, some, not all, certainly not all, but there are some police officers who have a chip on their shoulder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, it certainly doesn't hurt to, to get a better cut of cop. Mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of police over the past three, four, five years about this. This is a tough town to be a cop in. A very, very, very tough town. They tell me all the time the things that make the paper is just the mere tip mm -hmm. of a huge iceberg that goes on here around here every 60 days. And that's not bad on us. It's just things happen. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it a question? My question is: Is it a question again of someone with a different moral bearing, 
or is it just this is just a tough job and stuff's going to happen? Well, I think I think there's no doubt that this is a very tough job, and I think um, uh, you know your question to, to Rob about you know what does the chief do? I would say for any organization, not just law enforcement, any organization, it's really tough to turn things around when you're already facing mm -hmm. um, that kind of criticism. To just have the same person who's been in charge suddenly turn mm -hmm. and have and gain respect from the public is really difficult to do. And I think politically, a lot of people remove that person, bring someone in, and then you can start to sort of change the tide. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something they're contemplating, but you know, just to give some context, it's not like APD is the only one this past year that's been having problems. You know, we saw up in Santa Fe mm -hmm. the 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 sheriff selling yeah. things, Greg Solano, oh, on yeah. eBay. Yes. Right you know, now. his own Good stuff point. selling it on eBay. We saw state police officers stopping, mm -hmm. you know, stopping people it was the camera guy, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, the, there was the the guy, sheriff's guy, police officer, whoever it was that got caught having sex on his police car. I oh, mean, there's all right kinds too. of things happening. <laughs> I mean, so you know, I'm sorry to remind us all, of, of, you know, to drag us all through the mud, but, you know, just to give some perspective, I think we sure. have, we definitely have some folks who, who don't take their job seriously, mm -hmm. um, and, and that needs to be changed, I think, statewide, not just in Albuquerque. We've only got a few seconds left on the subject. I want to stay with you. When the report that Sophie referenced comes out, Clearly it's not going to be, look, everything's good here, the Chief's doing a great job, we're going back to Washington, thank you very much. So it's going to be tough for the Chief to explain a lot of the things. Can he get past that honestly? Because it's really going to be, think about what just happened to Sheriff Joe Arpaio in, in, in the federal uh, uh, situation there. They've called him out on his actions as well. Mm -hmm. Can and a Chief get through that? A lot of overreaching. I mean, very much. You know, yeah. I think in, uh, to distinguish between the Joe Arpaio, I'm, I'm familiar somewhat with some of Joe Arpaio's dealings, and yeah. he really sort of was extra legal in a lot of things that he did. Right. Um, I think the problem with Chief Schultz is that, you know, I don't necessarily think he stepped outside of his bounds, mm -hmm. but I think some of his police officers have just been involved in a lot of situations where they've taken matters into their own hands, right. where they've spoken out of turn, or they've just, um, you know, they're overzealous in some of their actions. Spoken out of turn on so, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, which right. I think can mm -hmm. cause major problems um, for exactly public, right. in terms of public perception. Interesting. In a moment, what didn't make the list this year. One thing that's worth pointing out though is that Santa Clara Pueblo, which is nearby, they lost 70% of their forested lands and their watershed was uh, not destroyed but, but harmed.